Hi, this is Randy Kirk, and uh, I guess we're just going to do an awful lot of these videos in the raw. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but you may have noticed we did put up another edited video today, and I hope you enjoyed that as well. Um, we are definitely in the middle of a firestorm. I am going to take credit for having started the firestorm. About three months ago, I started posting on Twitter that the energy ramp, the energy storage ramp was about to start. Nobody else was talking about it. I mentioned it as part of a potential catalyst. I mentioned it as something that was going to change the entire equation at Tesla. I talked about it, got a little bit of feedback from some people that were interested in it. Then the book came out. And in the book, we clearly stated energy will be a huge component of 2023 earnings. Nobody else was saying that. This is almost two months ago when the book was published. So we were obviously writing that weeks before uh, the actual publication date. Since that time, I've continued to talk about it on Twitter. We've continued to try to get people interested in the entire energy situation, the energy storage uh, situation. And people are slowly but surely starting to get more interested. Now, just about five days ago or something, I put together my first raw video uh, where I talked about what? I talked about the very same subject. I said, this is the most important video I'm ever going to do. That's what I said. Go back and look at it. This was just a few days ago. And I said it was the most important because Elon Musk has always said energy will eventually be equal to cars. Well, if energy is going to be equal to cars, then the current valuation of $150 a share, which is crazy, which is basically based 100% on cars, is more understated than anybody is even thinking about. Well, what does that mean to you and me? What that means to you and me is that we're in a potential opportunity for arbitrage. The catalyst is going to be when does Wall Street and retail investors figure out that there is another Tesla brewing inside of Tesla, which is going to be just as big and maybe more profitable than the car company. So that's where we were just a few days ago. Now, all of a sudden, folks are starting to get on board. And I got to give credit where credit is due. The, the, uh, a particular Twitter account who goes by the name, I want to get it right here. He goes by uh, the name of Zero Sum Game. So at Zero Sum Game. You're going to want to go on Twitter. You're going to want to get, zero, you're going to follow uh, zero sum game because uh, he is the one that did the research. He did the work. I congratulate him and applaud him for the work that he did. And he broke the news today. And there has been a scurry of activity all day long. So he went back to an article that had, had appeared in uh, Clean Technica back in October. And this article in Clean Technica said that in one year, this plant had been built. Um, and had started producing last October, and we're producing 25 megapacks a day. What does 25 megapacks a day really mean? Well, 20, the megapacks cost $2 million a piece, roughly. So that means that the Little Lathrop factory was producing $50 million a day in battery storage. Now, how do we get our arms around that? All these numbers are always so big. How do we get our, our, our head around 50 million? Well, if an average Model Y is $50,000, that means that Lath Little Lathrop was doing the equivalent of 1,000 cars per day. Now, if you go back in my uh, Twitter analysis, if you go back and look at some of my earlier videos, you're going to find out that I've been saying, I put up a tweet like two weeks ago that Lathrop is equal to, it's the equivalent of an Austin or a Berlin first phase. And I got a little bit of, you know, people say, oh, that's interesting. Oh, wow, that's 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 cool, Randy. <laughs> but there was not a, I think they just didn't, they didn't believe me or something. So it is the equivalent because the profit margins, as you'll see in a minute, are probably larger than the car business. And so it's probably equal to, or maybe even more important, in terms of the bottom line, the little Lathrop compared to the huge first phase in Berlin, the huge first phase in Austin, and all the energy and activity and drones and everything else that's going on in order to keep us up to date on those factories. And yet, little Lathrop is equivalent in terms of bottom line profits. So the debate today was, 
what all the activity, all this activity back and forth on Twitter was, well, are they really making 25 of these mega packs a day in Lathrop, or is that just the potential? And somewhere late in the day or middle of the day, I think it was, I said, well, you know, does it really matter if they're making 25 mega packs now, or if it's going to take them until next week, or maybe it'll even be first quarter, but you know, people want to have the facts. They want to know, is this already happening? So it went back and forth and some people saying, no, it's just, that's what they're projecting. They'll be able to do well. So then we had a fellow by the name, let me get it here. I want to, I want to make sure we get all these guys right here. We had, um, uh, here we go, Market Maven, no, yeah, Market Maven 22. I hope I got that right. Market Maven 22 drove to Lathrop, three hours one way, took his drone, started taking pictures, and he has posted. If you go on his, if you go on his Twitter, you'll find that he has pictures with 50 mega packs sitting in the parking lot. Well, if you have 50 sitting in the parking lot, parking lot, it's, you know, pretty clear that you're making a lot of them per day. And I guess, you know, they got to move those out every day, move new ones in. So I'm just going to go with Clean Technica and say they were giving honest reporting or good reporting. I shouldn't say honest, but good reporting. Their information was correct. And that Lathrop was already making 25 of these mega packs a day. Well, that's, uh, uh, and, and by the way, I do want to give uh, a credit also to uh, Brad Ferguson, um, and also, uh, there was another fellow here. Um, uh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding it. But uh, Brad Ferguson, um, he was uh, pushing back and making sure that we got the reporting right. Um, and another fellow, uh, I can't find it. Anyway, I'll put, I'll put all of this down in the, uh, in the description below, so that you can follow these four individuals who were chasing around and getting the right information and also really pushing everybody to make sure that we got it right. So the the end of the story is what how does this all really come out? I mean, we're talking about, you know, possibly um, a ten million dollar profit, I'm sorry, ten billion dollar profit per year before taxes, maybe eight point five billion after tax profit from this one location. And again, zero sum game goes into great detail. He figures out the cost of the raw materials, the labor, the amount to ship it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. The amount to ship it, he, he goes through the whole thing and he comes out with his net number. He comes out with a number and he says, it looks to him like it's just about a 50% margin after the addition of the IRA um, subsidies are our incentives as they as they like to call them so there's a, a uh, 45 dollars per kilowatt hour um that goes uh that goes to the maker of uh bat of um, wait a minute 45 dollars per kilowatt hour goes to the individual who's he may be wrong on this i have to go back and look that up for right now let's just stay with the idea that there is some tremendous advantage uh to these energy packs coming from the government um, and that the net amount is somewhere around 50% margins after all of the figuring that zero that zero uh, net uh, <laughs> zero <laughs> that zero sum games uh, came to. Uh, so let's just call it 8.5 million dollar billion dollars per year. If you give that a 33%, 35% PE. Uh, you'd be talking about $100 a share for Lathrop out of 33 PE. My theory, and I've been talking about this now for a couple of weeks, my theory is, well, a couple of months, more than that, is that we will begin to ramp these up. It's an easy thing. I built it in a year in the United States. Uh, I think you're going to be able to build them anywhere in the world very rapidly because they're not nearly as uh, complicated and and uh, don't have as many environmental issues, all the rest of that. So I think they'll be able to pop these up anywhere in the world. I think they're going to go for 25 uh, at some point over the next five years, four years, five years, 25 of these. So if you multiply the $100 per share times 25, that would be $2,500 a share just for the energy storage container, the mega pack 
part of the business, not even the power wall part of the business. Now do you begin to see why I keep saying that this was the most important video I ever made the other day? It's huge. And it's all, again, uh, go through these Twitter accounts and see the details and see if you can throw stones in any of it. But I think even if we're off by, you know, let's say for fun, that it's only $7 billion a year in profit at, you know, it, let's say it's 30 PE. You're still talking, you know, you're talking about a lot of money. So that's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll, you'll uh, uh, subscribe. I hope you're, you're, you you know, like the video. That'll help the algorithm, as you well know by now. And then I also have a Patreon uh, set up now, if you'd like to follow me on Patreon or, or, or subscribe to Patreon. So um, until next time, uh, it's been great talking to you today.